time to get back to Amazing Spider-Man, one of my favorite superheroes over at Marvel. Now, we have skipped over some of the stories, as I personally was not enjoying them, but it's time to tell you how Parker Industries is done, and the final battle between Otto Octavius and Spider-Man. At least for now, we know how comic books work. Anyway, I'm uh, going to be going into that story right now. The fall of Parker Industries, it takes place during Secret Empire. Keep that in mind. In any stories that we skipped on this channel, we will be giving you the information in the video. Hope you enjoy. In our last video, Peter Parker was hot on the trail of Norman Osborn and not pulling any punches in finding him. With his personal feelings aside, Peter had to bring his fight to Osborn to a country that didn't invite, you know, a US invasion. Just before the fight could be won, Osborn managed to escape and because Peter overthrew a foreign government using his own business, Nick Fury severed all ties with Parker Industries. Peter Parker has been doing well. He owns an entire industry known as Parker Industries based upon his webware, which is a futuristic phone technology, very similar to an iPhone. But while Peter Parker has been battling against Osborn in his battle to remove Osborn as a threat to the world, he's been using every resource at his advantage and not keeping in mind that Parker Industries is an entire company with multiple people that are employed by him, working for him, and people using his phones for their entire daily lives. He doesn't consider any of these things because he's Spider-Man and he has a fight against Norman Osborn. But there's another individual, someone else who has been a thorn in his side, someone who has been causing problems since the dawn of Spider-Man, and that is Dr. Octavius, Doc Ock. And while he may be dead right now, his mind has been downloaded and it is being used again. But how will he get his body back? As a man drives by the auto empire, his passenger says that this will be fine, he can drop him off here. The passenger asks if he's sure. All that's here is an old junkyard. He's not even wearing shoes. Might get tetanus or something. The passenger tells the driver that he doesn't really need to worry about that. He's in excellent shape and in time, he shall be rewarded. The driver says, don't worry about it. This is just on the way. So the man says, no, he'll see. Great changes are coming to this world and on that day, you will be favored. The driver pulls away and the man easily jumps over the gates and says that this proto-clone is better than anything Jackal could have designed because he perfected it. The man looks at his reflection and then he says that this face is a marked improvement as well. A synthetic spider clone with his own DNA. There's no denying the stronger, more prominent features of Otto Octavius in this clone of Peter Parker from the clone conspiracy. That is a storyline that we may cover eventually, but it wasn't the greatest storyline. The results of it basically are Otto Octavius got a new body, a proto clone of Peter Parker. Otto continues to walk as a set of crushed cars are lifted into the air, revealing an underground facility. As he steps in, the computer welcomes him and he tells it to play back any recent news regarding Parker Industries. The computer starts to play several news stations talking about the recent decline in Parker Industries stock. And Otto shouts, what are you doing to my company? Once again, for those of you guys who don't know, Otto Octavius was in the original Peter Parker's body in Superior Spider-Man. He was actually Peter Parker, and using his intelligence, he created Parker Industries before Peter Parker came back, taking his body back and taking over the company. Everything that Peter Parker has right now, all of his money, all of his technology, is because Otto Octavius took over his body. And then when Peter took his body back, Otto Octavius was gone. I know this whole thing is confusing, but let me just break it bare bones for you. Otto Octavius created Parker Industries and is now in a clone of Peter Parker. Otto slams his fist down and then he notices that the computer is clean. Too clean. Suddenly Otto's octopus sense tingles and the Hydra agents charge out shouting, Hail Hydra! Identify yourself, intruder! Otto asks, intruder? Of all of the unmitigated gall! As the agents open fire, Otto effortlessly jumps and weaves through the blast, grabbing onto each agent by their head. Using his newfound strength, Otto throws the agents into each other, and another group jumps out, tackling Otto to the ground, and one says that if he can walk on the walls, he must be a friend of the spiders. Otto launches all of the agents off of him, shouting, Fools! I will forever be one singular being! I am Otto Octavius! Soon the agents begin screaming as a wall of mechanical arms reach out grabbing and strangling them. And Otto tells them that this is my base and I am always armed. But still, I can't stay here. Hydra are worse than any vermin infestation. They know this location. With their superior numbers, they'll keep coming and coming and there will be no end to them. A voice then says, That is true, Air Doctor. But that could be used to your advantage. As Otto turns, he sees Arnim Zola, the so-called supreme scientist of Hydra. Otto demands that he explain himself, and Arnim says that it is true that Hydra will keep sending men to this base, and if you wish, they could work for you. Whether you meant to or not, you passed Hydra's first step by defeating the group's leader. You are the best candidate for his replacement. Otto then asks, 
Why would I do that? And Arnhem tells him, it's because we share the same goal. The destruction of Parker Industries. Arnhem extends a hand and Otto shakes it, telling him, yes, we will work together for now. And now with Hydra's resources, Otto begins to build a new suit. One with unparalleled designs made by none other than himself. And when the time comes, Otto begins to put on his new suit. And as he pulls down the mask, he says that he's back. Otto Octavius, the superior octopus. Over in a studio in London, Anne-Marie tells Peter to just remember, this interview is about one thing, damage control. Parker Industries is currently facing a zillion lawsuits, and Peter Parker has a reputation of being flaky. He asks how, and Anne-Marie says that he has moments of just running off, you know, the whip, the whip. So for the sake of our company, for the next 20 minutes, don't be that guy. Peter begins to fix his tie, and he asks, what, no words of encouragement? No good luck, boss? No go get him, tiger? Anne-Marie quietly shouts, don't screw up! A few moments later, the reporter tells Peter that she would like to thank him for joining them tonight. But their viewers must know what kind of company is he running. Last week, one of their products was linked to causes of mass nausea and discomfort. And the next week, he privately funded a war. Peter says so much for small talk, but we took action to stop terrorists and stop the spread of a deadly virus. So if you're stating that Parker Industries values people over profit, guilty as charged. As the interview goes on, the reporter stops and says they have breaking news. Sources confirm that the Earth is under an alien attack. Some of their most powerful protectors have joined with Alpha Flight to combat the invasion of the alien Chitauri. Peter gets back up and he looks over at Anne Marie and she motions for him to stop. And he shrugs, sitting back down. An assistant then tells Peter that she's sorry, but given what's happening, they're gonna have to reschedule the interview. Once outside, Anne-Marie gets into the car, remembering how she said to not be that guy. You're gonna be that guy, aren't you? You're gonna leave. Peter turns, sighing, asking, how did Iron Man ever do this? And after dropping Anne-Marie off, he goes back to his office when he feels the spider sense going off. He puts on the Spider-Man suit and he walks into Parker Industries, telling the workers not to be afraid. He's just going up to his suite before the boss man shows up. Uh, but aren't you guys working awfully late? Peter then looks around asking, where's Gerald? Gerald works nights, right? One of the workers tells the others that he's on to them, and then they jump at Spider-Man, shouting, Hail Hydra! Just as Spider-Man begins knocking everyone out, a voice calls over the intercom that all agents are to stand down. Spider-Man's business tonight is with him. Spider-Man gets back up, and he begins to walk towards his office, telling everyone that they are so fired when he tells Peter about this. Don't even think about taking a stapler! As he slams open the doors, he says that he kind of knows that voice, but why don't they go ahead and tell him who they are, since bad guys love doing that? The man sitting in Peter's chair says, Really? There's no need for such hysteronics. We know each other quite well. After all, I did walk a mile in your shoes. Spider-Man says that he figured it was Doc Ock. How did you survive? The clone body? And Otto gets up telling him, technically, yes, but not like the others. This one is far superior. Spider-Man then asks, why are you working with Hydra? That's even a bit low for you. So how about we both just go to New York and work some things out so that we can make a new start from here? Otto yells, silence! It is I who have an offer to extend. Since we have somewhat of a kinship, since we shared your body, I would like to offer an opportunity to peacefully transfer ownership of Parker Industries to me. Peter tells him, why would I give you my company? And Otto stops him, telling him, no, it was my company. It is I who in your body launched this company. Even afterwards, it was my consciousness trapped inside of the living brain that hacked systems and manipulated the markets to favor you. Right now, I have neither the time nor the patience to wrestle with pride. Will Parker Industries be released to me or not? An answer is required. Peter says, I require you to eat my web shorts. This is my company and I'm never giving it to you. Otto tells him, that is disappointing, but hardly surprising. Now, once again, my hand is forced. Soon an image of Manhattan appears as a dome appears over the borough. The image then changes to a news station and they report that all communication has been cut off from Manhattan, but the origin of the bubble seems to be coming from Parker Industries. Otto says, it's all lies and poppycocky, but nevertheless effective. Now the world will blame Peter Parker for Manhattan's dark fate. Spider-Man lunges at Otto, throwing him against a wall and Otto wipes off his mouth asking, was that your best shot? Spider-Man webs up Otto's eyes, tackling through the wall, telling him, not even close. But as Otto zaps the web off of his lens, his mechanical arms throw Peter into the ceiling, and he says, I know all of your tricks and how to counter them. Spider-Man quickly webs up the nearby coffee pots, throwing them into Otto's face, and just before he can deliver the final punch, Spider-Man hears a beep. A hollow image of Tony Stark's appears, and he says that this is for any and all Avengers that are left. If you can hear this, your services are required immediately. Otto laughs, telling him, <laughs> an all-out assault on Washington has begun. So how about it? Stay here, or help your poor friends when they need you the most. Spider-Man runs down to the garage, shouting that he can't believe he thought Otto had a conscience. All right, less anger, more reviewing the basics of piloting a supersonic pogo plane. As he rockets out of the office building, Otto waits until it's clear and then presses a button. Seconds later, the entire London-based office explodes and falls to the ground. He then begins to walk down the street, stating, 
It all went perfectly according to plan. Quick side note, just because I've had to explain everything else that's been going on in this amazing Spider-Man storyline, because it's interwoven into so many plots. The attack by the Chitauri and the Iron Man call, that's actually Secret Empire. This is all happening while Secret Empire happens. So that's why Peter Parker can't get any help, and why he's not in Secret Empire. A short while later, over in Washington, Spider-Man gets up from the ground asking how they can stop Cap if he's with Hydra. He's the man who never gives up, and how did he get Thor's hammer? He then shouts to Quicksilver to start kicking up some dust. They need cover, and they need to get out of here now. Meanwhile, over in San Francisco, Psylocke tells Otto not to make her read his mind. Out with it. What do you want? Otto says that he would like full access to Parker Industries San Francisco. There are a few paltry items inside which interest him. One of the mutants tells him that this is their place. Now, he doesn't get to make any demands, and as he finishes, Otto grabs him, throwing him across the city, stating, Are we in agreement now? Good. He hits a switch on his glove, shorting out the P and the I in Parker Industries, stating, There we go. As he leads the Hydra agents inside, he tells them that they have 20 minutes, hard drives, office files, server blades, they want it all. As the agents begin pulling out equipment, Otto waits, stating that that's intriguing. Spider-Man and him shared a mind. Certainly he would have made a move by now, so where on earth could he be? And over in the Shanghai office, Spider-Man tells all of the workers that Otto Octavius is coming and he wants to raid this place. He's gonna want all of the hard work that they put into their intellectual property for himself. So if they work together, they can, and one of the workers shouts that this isn't a Chinese company, it's his American company, and America is already Hydra. So as far as they're concerned, this is pointless. Another yells, yeah, Spider-Man always receives help from other heroes. Who's gonna help you this time? And Spider-Man tells them, you are, all of you. You're gonna get a chance to be heroes today. But before he could go on, Min whispers that she's sorry to interrupt, but Wu would like to see him. Says that is very important. He runs down into the labs asking what's going on, and Lin's mother sees Peter stating that this is the man responsible for what's happening. Peter tells Mrs. Tang that it's an honor to meet her. Her daughter has been invaluable to Parker Industries. Her work on Spider-Man's vehicles could have helped him save countless lives. Mrs. Tang laughs, stating that she gets that from him, but Dr. Wu pulls Peter aside before Mrs. Tang could go on telling him that she would like to thank him. Neither his government nor the private sector have poured as many resources into cancer research research as Parker Industries. He placed power and responsibility over profit and reaped the greatest reward of all, a daughter spending more time with her mother. Lin then grabs her spider helmet stating that she once betrayed him and he gave her a second chance and she will not waste it. She'll be in the vehicle bay with the equipment. Everything that she has designed is ready to go as soon as he gives the word. Later over in the green labs, Dr. Philip Chang asks Peter, you would like me to do what now? Peter tells him to be ready to destroy all of his equipment in a moment's notice. File, notes, backups, all of it. And Philip tells him that he is close to a major breakthrough. It could change the world. If I was to start from scratch, I wouldn't be able to just pick up where I left off. And Peter says, hopefully it won't come to that. But just then, the lights go out. The spider sense kicks in, and Peter runs to the window to see Otto making his way towards the building. He suits up, getting ready to go outside, and he radios to Lynn, telling her that they need to move out. And she tells the others, you heard the man, punch it. He heads to the roof, and Otto asks, evacuating so soon? That's the first smart thing that you've done in days. Just as Peter attacks, he asks, where's the rest of the army? And Otto tells him, I don't require an army. I have all the arms that a man needs. So Spider-Man sighs, telling him, yeah, kind of walked into that one. He grabs a hold of one of the mechanical arms and then throws Otto off of the ledge. As Otto falls, he grabs onto the side of the building, stating that it would seem that they are evenly matched now. And Spider-Man tells him, please, you're the guy who created the sinister six to one odds. Let's see how you like it. Troops move in. As Spider-Man snaps his fingers, a swarm of spider cars ride up the side of the building and Lynn shouts that they haven't surrounded. Just give the word. Otto looks around and asks if this is supposed to impress him. His victory in the foreign country made him bold and stupid. Coming after me with Parker Industries Tech, he pushes a button stating that he's always had a backdoor into the company. He was there from the beginning, from his vertical operating systems down to his logo. And Spider-Man looks up as Otto points out to take a closer look. Do you see my signature? Oh, oh, for Otto Octavius. And just as Otto finishes, all of the spider cars turn on Spider-Man. And Spider-Man shouts, what's happening? Lin yells, the controls are responding. All of the weapons are locked onto you. And all of the spider cars begin to skitter towards Spider-Man. Otto says that he would like to welcome his new employees, their first order of business, throwing out your fake CEO. As the spider cars grab onto Peter, Otto begins to head into the offices to start his raid. Once he's inside, Peter radios to Wu and Philip, asking what's the back up plan now. They tell him that his assumption is right. The signal that Dr. Octopus is using to control the cars is a constant one. Given enough time, they'll be able to find its signal. Inside Lin's car, she begins to pull apart the computer, stating that she is disengaging from the computer interface and she would like to switch the system to manual. Once she crosses the right wires, the grip on Peter loosens and he tells Lin that the others might not be able to do the same, so he's going to need her to. But she shouts, keep the doc busy, you got it. And Peter yells, no, I need you to walk these guys through this. 
back inside the server room, Otto begins to look around, stating that everything is right here, all within an arm's reach. As he reaches out, Lin crashes through the wall, driving the spider car into him, stating that she's gonna have to ask him to step outside. On the other side of the building, Peter finishes webbing up the other spider cars so they don't fall, and quickly jumps into the offices. As he heads into his office, he pulls back on the suit, and he rushes to his computer to give an announcement to everyone. Once the connection is set, he tells everyone that this is it. He didn't want to have to make this call, but they're facing a hostile takeover, literally. Not by investors or another company, but by a super villain, and he's listening in. If he were to get his hands on all of this data, it could be twisted into something helping the worst people on the world. It has been an honor to work with all of you at this company, but it's time to tear it all down. Do you hear that, Doc? I'm calling it now. Parker Industries is no more. Every department, activate worm viruses now, company-wide, wipe of all of the systems. As Otto fights with Lin, he shouts, What are you doing? What idiot would destroy a global empire just to keep it out of my hands? Who could be that petty, Parker? Back inside, before Peter can even finish his speech, everyone begins destroying everything, and some of the workers sigh that this was a good job while it lasted. Over in Peter's office, he activates a switch, revealing a suitcase, stating that this is secret weapon number one. And as he opens it up, he smiles, stating that it's been a while, but now it's time for secret weapon number two. And then he radios to Philip. Philip tells him that the device is calibrated and he can send it to Spider-Man to pick up. Now onto the last part. Philip takes out a matchbook and tosses a match into a stack of papers. As the fire burns, he says that he was so close to perfecting green energy. Wu tells him that it could have been a potential weapon in the wrong hands. Now they must leave. They've done their part. Back up top, Peter jumps onto the building, punching into Otto, asking him, Did you miss me? And Otto shouts for him to shut up! Everything that I've built is now ruined! And Peter tells him, Yeah, I'm that kid who just flipped over the whole board game table. So even if you do win back your kingdom, it'll be a kingdom of ashes. Otto clenches his fist, telling him, I know your Achilles heel. Remember Osborne's electric? Electromagnetic pulse? Well, this vision will rip that spider suit to shreds. As the pulse hits, it begins to tear away at the suit, and as Peter catches himself, he's still in his costume. His old, original, non-enhanced version. He asks, How do the old underoos look? This is really the only suit that I've ever needed to defeat you, Otto. And here's something else that's gonna help. He presses a small button, and using the signal that Philip and Wu locked onto, he releases an EMP wave, shocking Otto's suit and rendering the mechanical arms useless. They begin to flail around, and as one hits Otto, Peter asks, Why you keep hitting yourself? Otto shouts that he is nothing but a juvenile. But obviously, you don't care for your friends. Otto begins to web away, telling him that that pulse would have disabled the magnetic grip on the spider cars. So you better hurry before they fall to their deaths. Peter asks him, are you bluffing? I can't risk it. And as Lynn radios in that the clamps are still holding, Peter begins to follow, yelling that he falls for it every time. As he reaches the roof where Otto landed, all he finds are the mechanical arms in Otto's mask. He grabs the mask, realizing that he has no idea what the new Otto Octavius looks like. And it looks like he's gonna have to catch him another time. Later over at Hydra Base 1, Arnim Zola tells Otto that his mission was a complete success. Parker Industries is in shambles, just as their glorious leader, Stephen Rogers, intended. In fact, he wanted to pass a message along to him that he is one of his finest soldiers. And Otto says to tell Steve that he is honored. Now in the back of Otto's head, he yells, Look at me! Reduced to a mere lackey! Everything I've built is now in ruins, but one day there will come a reckoning! And there you have it. Peter Parker is now back to being Parker Luck. I have nothing to my name, Peter Parker. And in the next story arc, he's sleeping on Bobby Morrison's, or not Bobby Morrison, Mockingbird's couch. That's, is it Bobby Morrison? I don't, let me know in the comments down below if I'm wrong or right. I, I swear, I'm gonna watch live footage and watch you guys, con just, just, yeah, I'll look it up right after this video is done. You can let me know, but I'm gonna look it up right after this is done. Anyway, if you want more Spider-Man, click right over here. If you want the next story in the Spider-Man arc, let me know in the comments down below so maybe we can put it in front. You can find out how he sleeps on her couch. It's a lot more interesting than I'm making it sound right now. And subscribe if you feel that we've done such a good job that you want to stick around because we would really appreciate it.